What's up guys, it's Ron again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina, and if you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, click this little subscribe button over here and ding that little bell as well, that way you guys will be notified every time we upload new content. Now we're out to do another underwater salvage job or an underwater inspection job in this video, and we're going to do things just a little bit different. We're actually not only going to commentate the video and walk you through step by step what we're doing, we're also going to show you some behind the scenes footage of how we go about doing this. Now that behind the scenes footage is going to kind of be set up for the camera itself. So you're going to see how we get these shots with the cameras that we use. But we're also going to be talking about the prep work and the briefings and the things that we do before we do this salvage type work. Throughout this video too, I'm going to be talking about what type of training you may want to seek out before you attempt to do this. This is commercialized diving, so this is outside the realm of both recreational and even technical diving. However, there's a lot of good training that you can get in both the recreational and the technical field that will help you out if you decide to do stuff like this. So one of the first things that we do, of course, is briefing. We spend a, a tremendous amount of time briefing this. I do have a new diver with me today that's going to be helping out and learning how we do this. So I spent about an hour with him in my office going over the dive site talking about the depths talking about how we're going to be conducting the dive and some uh, things that he needs to consider maybe his gear configuration things like that so that when we go into say an overhead environment or a very tight restriction that he's going to be adequately prepared for that now he is an experienced diver he's got well over 100 dives under his belt but once again just because you've got a bunch of dives doesn't mean you're properly prepared or trained to do what we're going to do. So if it's something that you want to seek out or, and, and try to do for a living, make sure you're getting proper training, even if that means go to a commercial dive school to get it. But another thing that we do is we always check the environment. If you look out here in front of me now, you'll see it is a bright, sunny day. It's a beautiful day. I think currently it's 68 degrees out and it's only going to get warmer. It's only about 8.47 in the morning. So we always want to check the weather. So one of the things I do is I always check local weather, and the best place to do that is NOAA. It was mostly sunny, with a temperature of 64 at Spaceville, 62 at Raleigh, Durham, and 59 at Bluefield. It was partly sunny, with a temperature of 66 at Charlotte, 60 at Greensboro, and 60 at Bristol. At Knoxville, it was cloudy. So of course weather is just one of those things, but we really like checking the weather simply because it, it's going to give us a lot of information. Is it going to be windy? Is it going to be rainy? What's our visibility going to be like? Yeah, we can kind of tell visibility based off what the weather is. If it's raining, we know we're going to have a ton of runoff. We're not going to have the visibility that we need. So just little things like that are very, very important to us when we prep for a dive like this. But even once we get to the dive site itself, we're also going to be doing another final evaluation of the dive site just to make sure everything's good. We've got a little ways to get down the road here, and then once we get there, I'll kind of walk you through step by step how we prepare for a dive like this. All right, guys, if you can't already tell, the water's gonna be extremely muddy today. I don't think we're gonna have any visibility at all, so that's actually gonna be good for this video because I can really give you a good commentary of what we're doing, what we're feeling, and what we experience when we're underwater. We're gonna get right over here and get set up, and we're gonna walk out across what they call the dam here and go ahead and open the flow here. Basically, our job is to inspect a water intake system, a secondary water intake system, and of course, inspect a drain pipe at the bottom of this lake. Deepest part here is only about 23 feet, so we're going to jump in and do that. But I'm going to walk you across the dam and show you exactly what we got to do to prep for this job. All right, guys, so I'm going to walk you out here real quick and show you what we're dealing with. This is a very, very muddy pond that we're going to be diving in today. There is an electric intake right over here. You guys have seen in a couple of our videos. We've actually went up inside it, and that's what we're going to be doing today as well, doing a quick inspection, looking for any debris or any damage to the intake. This here is a diesel intake, so we'll be doing an inspection on it as well. Now, this one's very, very simple to do because it's relatively shallow. It's only about four or five foot deep, and we've just got to kind of inspect the gray area here, but we've got to do it from the water side. But we're also going to be walking right out here to where the drain pump is. And this drain pump or this drain pipe is 23 foot deep. So what we do is we open it up 
and of course we are going to flow water through it for about 10 to 15 minutes just to make sure that it's operating properly. We can ride around to the back side of this dam that we're walking across now and make sure the water flow is where it needs to be. Then we'll come back over here, we're going to shut it down, um, and then we'll commence with our dives. The first thing we do of course is we'll get in where my truck's parked, We'll come all, swim all the way across the surface, and we're going to go down this pipe where the turn wheel is. I'll show it to you in just a minute. But we're going to go down that pipe, and we're going to go all the way down to the drain pipe itself or the drain hole. And we'll do a quick 360 inspection of it, make sure there's no major debris. Now, one of the things that we also do here is we check the water level. And if you'll look right here, you'll notice there is a pipe with a bunch of kind of colored beads or colored rings around it. That lets us know what the water level is, where it should be, what the average uh, depth of it is. And so we can kind of monitor that as well. This is also an overflow pipe here. So if the water comes up too high, it can flow through. But basically what we're gonna start with, we're gonna open this up and you can kind of see that pipe that goes off through the water right there. We're gonna open it up, drain the water, then we'll come back and we'll shut it down. And we're gonna swim down this pipe all the way out to the center of the lake, if you will and inspect that as well. We've got a busy, busy day ahead of us, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Alright guys, so now we got the pipe open, basically what's happening is, is about 50 or 60 foot out in front of us, it drops down to a 23 foot hole and it's draining water through, it's coming through this overflow, the pipe goes up underneath the dam and it flows water out. Um, <coughs> this is a pain in the butt to do, but unfortunately it's something that we've got to do. We're also testing uh, the valve, it's a butterfly valve that's down there. We're testing it just to make sure that there's no debris in it, that it can pump water. This private lake here, this is a 14 acre private lake, is used for fire protection for the company that we're at. And so that means they're using these intakes to pump, pump water in for their uh, water pumps or for their water sprinkler system. Well, we're gonna let this run for about 10, 15 minutes. We're gonna come back down here and shut it down. Then we'll get our gear on. We're gonna swim out across the surface. We're gonna follow this pipe system all the way down all the way out to the pipe. And I don't know if you can see it on camera, but you can actually see where we're gonna be. There's a slight little swirl right about right out in there. And that swirl is where we're gonna be at when we're underwater. So we're gonna go down, we're gonna inspect the drain itself, and then we'll come back up, shut everything back down, and then we're gonna go over here to these two intakes and do quick inspections on them as well. All right guys, so we're gonna go ahead and get this prepped up. Basically, this is the electric intake system here. And in short, we have to swim up inside of this building from the water's edge. So we gotta go through this little concrete chamber here. It's probably only about five feet across. We're gonna move these big tall grates. They're probably, if I had to guess, 10, 15 foot tall. And then we're gonna swim all the way up inside this chamber here. And we're gonna look at the intake just to make sure that it's good. There's nothing sucked up in, in it. But to do that, of course, we have to do a lockout and tag out procedure here. And of course, we're getting employees of the company here down here to do that for us. And then we'll verify it before we get in water. But this takes a little bit of time. So we're gonna go ahead and get set up and get these uh, grates moved out of our way.
got both grates up, it's actually time to do a lockout tag out here on the pump and then we can get in and start doing our jobs. But just to show you really quick what we inspect here, these grates are basically just meant to keep any dirt, debris, big limbs, trees, stuff like that out of this intake. They do run this intake, of course, for fire inspection. So it keeps all that debris out. But one of the things that we inspect is the grates themselves. Typically we would clean these as well, just run a brush across them or whatnot, but we're also looking for damage like we got right here. You can see this this grate's actually starting to rust through. There you can see I'm just breaking it apart. So of course that's going to be reported to the company as well uh, to let them know that they need to try to fix that. Even up here where it semi stays dry because this is the top, you can see where it's still breaking through. So we'll report that to them as well. Um, but we got pretty lengthy dive ahead of us. We got quite a bit. Just kind of gives you a a better indication of what we're diving through. You can see it's not very wide in there. And yes, this is an overhead environment, but we sh we're still gonna have a little bit of air, which we'll talk about, a little bit of surface air. So there's gonna be things that you'll probably question about this video, and I wanna make this video uh, educational to you and kinda explain why we do what we do. But we're gonna go get our gear ready. We're gonna come back up here and do a lockout tag out position or a procedure on this. And then we're gonna jump in and I'll kinda walk you through it as well. So now we're going to jump into what you guys have actually come to watch this video about. We're going to go ahead and do the first inspection on the diesel pump. This is probably one of the easiest inspections we ever have to do. It's roughly four and a half, five foot deep here. Basically what we're going to do is just drop down and look at the grates. We're going to shine a light up inside the pump and just see what we can see. A lot of times we'll just clean it for them while we're here. There's not that much debris. There's a couple little tiny sticks and stuff there you can see. But we just kind of clean off all the moss growth and stuff like that for them. And we're just looking to see if if there's any damage or if there's any debris just shoved up in between the grates themselves. Like I said, this is a really, really easy inspection for us here. Uh, this is something that takes us probably about 30 seconds to do. But I am training this other diver on how to do this as well. So I'm going to take a little bit extra time just to show him. Uh, but you'll see it's getting a little bit clearer there. We're just kind of wiping our hands over and cleaning it off as well. But once we get that done, we will go ahead and move over to the next one as well. All right, so now we're going to fix to go down on the main drain pipe, but we're going to do an inspection of the pipe itself all the way down, and we've already found damage here. This actually occurred while we were shutting the system off. So as y'all saw earlier in the video, we turned the, the turn wheel up top, we opened the drainage, and we ran for probably about 10 or 15 minutes just running water through the drain. As we went to go shut it off, once we got to the end, uh, this first little turnbuckle actually snapped on us. So this will definitely go in our report. Let them know that they need to get that fixed immediately now the thing about this is if the lake was to flood maybe they get an excess amount of rain 
and the lake floods they're not going to have a way to uh, drain the lake to a reasonable level yes they do have an overflow here but that's not really going to be able to uh, do much for them if we get an excess of amount of rain one of the things you guys have heard me say here in the past is for every one inch of rain that we get we get about four inches of water raise um, so if it's about three foot there you can kind of do the math and see it wouldn't take much rain to actually flood this lake out and of course flood over the dam now we're going to head all the way down to the bottom and we're going to be testing or inspecting every little turnbuckle, every little knuckle in this system. And as we come to it, we're just going to be checking one side. So I'll check that little connection right there real quick and then move on. And I'm only going to be checking the upper side of it during my descent phase. Once I go all the way down to the bottom to where the drain hole is and check out the grate, as I come back up for my ascent, I will be checking the back side. So here you can see there's a little knuckle bracket here. And I'm just going to be checking the uh, nuts and bolts on one side of it. I'm not concerned about the lower side yet. I will get back to that during the ascent phase. But I'm going to head on down. You'll notice that the turbidity picks up quite a bit. And you'll also know, notice that the light goes away really quick. If you remember from your open water course, uh, just basic open water 101, you learn how light gets absorbed into the water column the deeper you go. And you're actually going to see that here um, in this video as well. Speaking of courses, what courses would I recommend if you're going to be doing work like this well first of all if you're going to be doing commercial work it's always good to have some type of commercial uh, dive training so there's a ton of schools out there that you can go to but as far as recreational or technical classes uh, there's some great courses obviously if you're going to be working in dark water the night diver course is a great course as well if you're going to be doing salvage work where you're lifting things off the bottom, then a basic search and recovery uh, you know, course is gonna be great to give you those basic skills. Here you can see the uh, grate at the bottom, and I know you can just barely see it for a few seconds there. That's how muddy it is down there. You just simply touch the grate, and of course, it's it, all your visibility is gonna be shot. Uh, basically, what we're doing here is just circling around the grate, looking for debris, making sure there's nothing stuck in it. But getting back to the courses, of course, like I said, Night Diver, Search and Recovery, those are great courses as well. Um, another great course would, of course, be your perfect buoyancy course. The cool thing about that, it's going to teach you how to get down there and not really stir up the bottom like we're doing now. Um, we'll go over when we get into the electric pump system. I'll talk a little bit more about um, gear intensive courses that, that would be great in situations like this. Um, but just your basic specialty courses that would apply of course your night diver maybe your um, search and recovery your science of diving uh, things like that that's really going to apply to what we're doing here uh, even full face mask and and your dry suit course or even a public safety diver course public safety diver would probably be a huge one here just because you're going to learn learn to work in a team-based environment and of course most of my guys the gentleman that's diving with me today he's still learning he's still training um, and so we're trying to work him up to that point but most of our guys are public safety trained so it makes it a lot easier for us to be able to get in there and communicate even when we don't have visibility um, like I said too, the full face mask class would be a, a good course as well because then you could have the comm units I know a lot of guys ask, well, why don't y'all always use full face mask? And we do. We use them a lot in our videos. It just depends on the job um, that we're doing. But here we're making our ascent back up, and you'll see now we're checking the back side of those couplings and of those brackets. Like I said, on the way down, we check one side. On the way back up, we check the other side. But we're going to work our way on back up to the surface here checking each little coupling there there's a great example you can see uh, that final coupling but as we get back to the surface our visibility starts to come back because the light is able to penetrate their turbidity level actually goes down quite a bit so it makes it easier on us but we're going to go up we're going to do just a quick little debrief uh, between myself and the other diver just to see what we uh, found he might have seen something that i didn't and vice versa and so we'll we'll be able to put that in our report as well just by debriefing with each other these brackets right here are actually relatively new um, they were put in probably about four or five years ago or they were actually replaced so we hadn't had uh, much trouble out of them during inspections like i said this is something we do twice a year for this company we do a, a early yearly inspection and then of course we do a cleanup dive as well but now that we're back at the surface we're going to do a really quick debrief and then we're going to head over to the um, electric pump system and do a good inspection on it as well 
All right, now it's time to go inside this electric uh, pump system here. And what I'm going to do is just give my my new diver here just a couple little tips and tricks on how we're going to handle this situation. And before we ever go in, let me go ahead and state this. Even without commercial training, there are certain things that you as a diver can perform. Um, but there are different specialty courses that I would strongly encourage you to have, whether it's advanced rec where you're doing penetration, a uh, cavern class, a rec or a cave class, anything that's going to teach you proper penetration skills. In my opinion, that's an absolute must. Now, obviously, if you're a commercial diver, you tend to uh, get a lot of overhead environment training as well. But from the recreational and technical standpoint, the advanced rec, the cavern, the cave class is an absolute must. Now one of the things that we teach you in those courses is how to run lines. One thing that you will notice in this particular dive, we are not going to run a line and there's several reasons why. One, we're going about 30 feet back and it's about a five foot channel or a four foot channel here. So we're actually going to be using the walls as our guide to get through. It is only eight foot deep and even though it is an overhead environment, it's not a true overhead environment in the fact that we can't come up uh, because there is a gap there. We're going to have about, I don't know, about 10 inches of a water gap until we get to the back. Then we've got about six inches of a, a gap down to the water. So as we descend down here, we're not even concerned with running a line here. We are going to drop down to the floor there. It's concrete bottom which you can't really see in the video because that concrete bottom is full of silt and mud and leaves and just dirt and a couple of little small pieces of debris which is once again the purpose while we're there is to inspect this to see um, what we need to do so there you can see I just kind of push down into the silt there um, once a year we come out and we inspect this a uh, second time a year we come out and we'll actually clean all this up so the next time we go out uh, for this company we'll actually take a uh, dredge pump out here to suck all this out clean it out for them this is just an initial inspection here but here we've actually made it in so as you can see it we didn't go that far up in there um, but we made it into the intake pipe itself and what I'm going to do is just follow it back up to the surface. It's only about 8 foot deep total. But once I come up in there, you'll see it's another 15 to 20 feet up above me. Um, and I'm going to inspect the entire intake pipe. Make sure the couplings are good. Make sure it's not rusted out. Uh, make sure that the ceiling, what I'm fixing to look out here, which is actually the floor of the pump house, I want to make sure everything's good, that it's not going to be falling in and things like that um, for the workers who are up there um, manipulating the pump and things like that. As I turn around to check on the other diver you'll see what I mean about the overhead environment there's about a six inch gap there uh, and then of course it opens up to about a 10 inch gap so even even though we're in this overhead environment structure we're not completely in an overhead environment because we do have uh, atmospheric air there if you will uh, and you can also see there's just not enough room in my opinion to really run a line there's too much uh, of an entanglement hazard at that point if two of us were run a line uh, because basically what we're having to do is is just basically leapfrog over each other here and if we were trying to run a line it would just be too much of a hassle for us and it'd be too dangerous in my opinion but we're going to finish up our inspection there you can see just about how rusty it is i'm going to get the other diver up here so that he can kind of get the hang of doing these inspections as well because that's of course why i brought him today i'm training him on how to do this uh, but he's going to come up there. I'm going to give him some uh, final tips and tricks on what he needs to be looking at and uh, making doc, you know, making notes on for our documentation and for our reports. And then, of course, I'm going to send him back down uh, to the eight foot bottom there and have him go ahead and exit. And then I'll come in uh, or come out from behind him. But as we finish up our inspection here, we're just making notes in the corners. We're checking the concrete. We're checking the pipe. Uh, just inspecting the system as a whole uh, we've already inspected the great part of the pump we did that as soon as we basically ran into it um, and everything looked good but our main concerns here is the rust on the pipe which doesn't really look that bad it's to be honest it's not that bad this is pretty pretty um, thick steel pipe there but our main concern is the floor uh, it should be clear of basically everything because there's not much of a gap between the floor and the bottom of the intake itself so 
like I said, our biggest concern is all the debris and the silt and the mud and the leaves that are down there. Um, and we're going to have to get that pumped out for them pretty quick because if it continues to fill up, they go to turn on this pump for their for their fire protection or whatnot, then they're just going to suck that stuff up to the pump and it's not going to flow water. But here we've descended back down. Uh, we're back on the floor and we are going to head back out into the open water part um, and then kind of complete our inspection there. Once we get out of course we'll break our gear down we'll put those grates back where they go um, that prevents anybody else from getting up in there and prevents any major debris getting in there other than leaves and stuff like that but once we get out break our gear down we'll go ahead and file a report with them and then uh, I'm gonna give you some final thoughts here uh, towards the end of the video as well so we had the arm brake on the turn wheel we had the two grates that we lifted up, they're rusted through. We can break them off with our hands, right? We know that there's about five to six inches of dirt and leaves that we've got to get up. Anything else that we found? Uh, other than that nice big bass, no. All right, you had some equipment issues with your necklace, right? Yeah, that necklace uh, broke apart. Yeah. So anything else that we can think of? Mm -hmm. And guys, that's it. The last thing that we want to do, of course, is debrief. We always debrief after every single job just so that we can make sure that we're doing the best we can as the divers. If we do have malfunctions or any type of mistakes we made, we can learn from them. We can move on. But I really hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope it was educational not only from the commentary side, but also seeing the behind the scenes of how we do things and why we do them that way. Uh, but if you got any questions, put it down in the comment section below. If you did like the video, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share it as well. But as always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Pin us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business. Good job.